Now, I'm going to bring you to a very familiar portion of Scripture. Some of you will know it so thoroughly, but it has been speaking quite a bit to me. Luke 5. Luke 5. Let's read these few verses, please. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were on in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now, my dear friends, you know, some of these simple scenes that you can come across anywhere, even today, we see Jesus wanting to address the people. And so he asked, that he might use one of these ships. And the crowd was such that he needed, lest they should press on him, you know, a little distance, and they thrust out this boat a little into the waters. And he taught them the wonderful thing about the Word of God is this. It is experimental knowledge. Sometimes we have our heads chock full with, oh, Scripture and the Word of God, we have heard this. We have heard all kinds of philosophies, but actually it 
does not come down to any practical living. That is wrong. You know, what you learn in the mathematics lecture room or physics, you experiment it. Or you put down the equation and see that it works. And if it does not, you're just timid. You can't proceed any further. You expect it to work. You know. But when it comes to the word of God and eternal things, Somehow, we don't get to that position of working them out in the details of our lives. I see certain currents, very strong currents. One of them is success. You know, that is what people are taught from childhood, you've got to succeed. I suppose it gets into every pore of our being. And we say, and how do we evaluate success? There again, there is a very false evaluation. The bigger the pile of money, the greater is our success. Now it's staggering what the America owes other nations is a staggering figure today. How such a thing could have come about? You know, is a most extraordinary thing. The leaks appear to be many today. One of the greatest leaks which is appearing in this nation and in our world is the horrible leak in the family unit. And you know, folks, it normally in a ship I was in a ship which was being tossed 30 feet. I tell you, it was a very pleasant experience. It was an experience which made my stomach churn. And it was a fearful experience when nothing would stay still, you know and things would fall around you. However, this was when I was passing through a storm, rounding the Cape of Good Hope. That's at the bottom of Africa. Well, so when a leak occurs, there's no way to prevent it from getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And life is such a short experience. I suppose I'm qualified to say that to you because most of you are less than half my age, I guess. And life is a very short 
run and coming to the end of the runway comes very fast and you take off where are you taking off to would be the big question now friends here was a person who could come out and tell the lord jesus with all my expertise i fail to catch anything now that is a sad admission for anybody and if one has to make that admission at the end of his life it would be tragedy now what is the truth which is given to us must be concretized we must see it in action and today i was replying a letter in which a technically highly qualified person was in great distress and i pointed out this could be generational sin something that has come from generation to generation you know that is where the cross of jesus comes cutting off that flood which seems to have a grip upon you as it drives you along the tide but that is where the death and resurrection of the lord jesus christ calls a stop to the generational sense so this person wrote to me saying yes of course i don't know anything very much about that family at all but this person said yes i believe it is the generational sense and i know what took place in my family my dear friends many people are having to live with guilt no we don't have to live with guilt at all when there is the promise of god that if we confess our sins he is faithful and just see it's not just our doing you know our rowing for the shore or struggling up and down or whatever he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all uncleanness does does it say some uncleanness no there is the uncleanness in your tongue some people can't talk one sentence which edifies somebody there will be something which is 
negative, some insinuation, some sarcasm. so as to hurt somebody else. That's an awful uncleanness in the tongue. You know, when people say that they have seen their dads pull out whole clumps of hair from the mother's head, what a sight for a little boy or a girl to see. But this is happening in many circles, not just in the slums, not at all. Some people wound physically, some people wound through their tongues. On an unclean tongue, Now what about the eyes? The eyes seem to capture not the good things, but so much evil comes through the eye gate, cleanses from all unrighteousness, everything which is crooked, goes, and you become a person, a see-through person. You know, would you like to be a see-through person? Some people have so much to hide that they dare not in any way give, the, give themselves away. So it's always some little cover-up. You know, cover-up can be very exacting. Cover-up, that was what my life was. Everything covered up very nicely. The external was very fine, but so much evil which was covered up. I want to tell you the very effort is not worth it. It takes too much out of you to cover up. Now, could Peter have covered up an empty vessel and they were washing their nets and there was no catch, no fish to show for their labor, all night labor. You know, my dear friends, one of the things that God teaches you early is to seek His will which is the right side where I must cast my net. You know, sometimes an empty net brings you to your senses. And you say, hey, I've got money, I've got all this, but what good is it? The potential of my life is being wasted. You know, in this highly competitive world of today, we must think of those who are dropouts. Everywhere you meet with disgruntled people, all they can talk of Look at the way the president himself cannot escape. All kinds of criticism. In poetry, you come across a King Canute. K 
King Canute once stood before the tide. Sometimes in Britain, the tides recede some miles. And then when the tide turns, the water comes in so fast. If you are caught out there, when the tide turns, oh, you're in grave danger. Well, but this king thought he was encouraged by his courtiers, who said, Oh, king, you can certainly stop the tide. And this foolish king believed it. So he stood against the tide, and poor fellow, I'm sure he had to scram and run for his life. You see, folks, we believe in casting blame. We believe in trying to find some scapegoat, somebody on whom we vent our frustrations. Why? Lord, here is my empty boat, and you're asking me to go back and fish. I've done it all night. You know, acknowledgement is something very rare. Honest acknowledgement. It is sad. I remember in one of the early revivals, a very smart lad, the oldest son of a school superintendent, was principal son. He was converted. And he went to his father and told him everything about all the cover-up in his life. And you know what the father said? Today I know my son. I never knew him. And he was not a little boy, you know. He was a college grad. How wonderful, you know. Where does suspicion come? When you and I are people whose yes is yes and no is no. But you know what God says? Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord your God, and hast scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree. And you have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we would humble ourselves before you. The world around us seems to depict the fact that we have a harlot heart a heart which runs hither and thither. O oh Lord our God, forgive us. Lord Jesus, come to us. In Jesus' holy name, amen.